Hey, this is Mike Money. Welcome back to the Money Pit. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite bands, Sabotage. They were founded in 1979 by brothers John and Chris Oliva. They were first called Avatar. Al Snow, somewhere is upset about that. But there's already a band called that who I never heard of, so they changed their name to Sabotage right before the debut, the, the release of their debut album, Sirens, 1983. Uh, they had the song Sirens and Rage. In 1984, they released an EP. Go figure. Don't bands usually release the EP and then the album? Not the album, then the EP? I just thought this was strange. But in 1984, they released the EP, The Dungeons Are Calling, which is awesome. Featured, The Dungeons Are Calling, Midas Night, City Beneath the Surface, and The Whip, if you're into kinky sex. In 1984, they released a sentimental favorite of mine, Power of the Night, which included Power of the Night, Unusual, Warriors, Washed Out, Hard for Love and Skull Session. In 1986, they released Fight for Rock, which I was lukewarm about, but included a cover of Bad Fingers Day After Day. Go figure. 1987, here's the year. They released one of their most famous albums, Hall of the Mountain King. I had Hall of the Mountain King, 24 Hours Ago, Strange Wings, The Price You Pay, and Devastation. MTV would start showing their videos, which gave the band a lot more exposure. Okay, 1989, they released Gutter Ballet, which, goes figure, they had the song Gutter Ballet. Of Rage and War, She's in Love, Hounds, Mentally Yours, and one of my all-time favorites, When the Crowds Are Gone. 1991, they released Streets, a rock opera. A lot of people did not like this album. I became a huge fan after hearing it X number of times. Okay, guess what? It had the song Streets. Jesus Saves, Tonight He Grins Again, New York City Don't Mean Nothing, if I go away and believe. This was the only time I saw him in concert. I saw him with Scott Free at Club Met in Harrisburg. After this tour, John left the band. In 1993, they brought in a new singer, Zachary Stevens, and they released Edge of Thorns, which had the song Edge of Thorns, Follow Me, All That I Bleed, Damien, and Sleep. But tragedy would strike the band. In October of 1993, Chris Oliva was killed by a drunk driver. The band was really was never the same, but some of the albums aren't that bad. They brought in former guitarist from Testament, Alex Skolnick, and released Handful of Rain in 1994 with the song Handful of Rain. <laughs> I have to laugh because it's just funny. Chance and Alone You Breathe, which was actually a tribute from John to his brother Chris that died. 1995, they released Dead Winter Dead, which had the song Dead Winter Dead. <laughs> Doesn't matter anyway. And Christmas Eve, Sarajevo, 1224. This was the Christmas one that everybody knows. They played that dun 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 dun. dun. You, you heard it on the radio 10 million times. This would sort of pave the way for Trans Siberian Orchestra, which I call lame sabotage. I just not a fan. I'm not a fan of Christmas, so go figure. I wouldn't like heavy metal Christmas music. In 1997, they released Wake of Magellan. And then in 2001, they released Poets and Madman. That was the last time they released any albums. For a little while, John Oliva formed John Oliva's Pain. Uh, one of my favorite bands. They don't get the credit they deserve. But I got to end it with my favorite wrestler saying, Savage Reigns in the Hall of the Macho King. This is Mike Money for the Money Pit saying, Adios, muchacho.